the renewing of the mind, we always hear about this in the kingdom, being renewed in the mind. And that's what Simply Uncaged is about, to be simply uncaged in the mind. The biggest prison in this world is not the physical prison, it is the mind. I once heard that it is the mind that keeps us entrapped, and this is where the warfare is. This is where the bondage starts. These strongholds, the Bible calls it strongholds, the world calls it addictions. You might be addicted to lust, addicted to fear, addicted to abuse, addicted, and I know, abuse? Why, why would I be addicted to abuse? Well, when we uncover the, what real abuse is, I, sometimes I have to unlearn religion. I have to unlearn church so that I can relearn Christ, so I can be renewed in the mind through Christ. Now, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, but it is the renewing of the mind of how the Lord reveals himself to us every day. God is the same. It's a fresh revelation of who he is, who we see he is. See, so many people that might have grown up in church didn't grow up in Christ. They might know the hymns and the songs, but do they know him? They might know the hymns, but do they know him? This is the difference between knowing of God and knowing God. Do you truly know God? And this is why the mind is so powerful because it can influence us in what we do. Our thoughts become our words. The words become your action and your actions become your destiny. And the question is, is it my will or God's will? Father, let it not be my will. Let it be thy will. I need to be refreshed in the soul, refreshed in the spirit. I need a renewed mind. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts and our mind. And as I continue to look at how our decisions determine our condition, I'm going to say that again. Our decisions in life determine our condition in life. How I make decisions affect who I am. Actually, I'm not, I'm not who I am because of what I do. I am who I am because of what I constantly do. I'm either sowing seeds onto good soil, good ground, and I'm allowing the wheat to grow, not the tear. And I have to know how to do this. And this is where the garden right here is our mind. The seeds that are being planted from above. The weapons of the warfare that are not carnal, but are mighty in pulling down these strongholds, these addictions. What are some things that culture has affected us? How have we been affected as culture? I, I just think about it. I think about the thoughts that come because that's what influences how we live. Your decisions determine your condition. And if I can just be brand new in Christ, if I can just operate as a new person, a new creature in Christ, you might know the hymns, but do you know him? You might know of God, but have you experienced God? Have you encountered God? When I think about an encounter with Christ, it's something that we don't always understand. And this is why we have to get to know him. That when God steps into your life, when the Lord steps into your life and it's like, hey, <laughs> I'm trying to give you a sign. I kind of think about Exodus chapter three with the burning bush and Moses Right, how God had to reveal himself in a way, get get Moses' attention so that he can look for what he's doing. And then the angel came and then the Lord spoke to Moses. These are the type of encounters we're looking for. And I think it starts off with that renewed mind. How do I see the Lord? I'm not talking about the Jesus that the world is is talking about. I'm talking about the Jesus that the Bible reveals under the power of the Holy Spirit, through the scriptures. Right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I need to be renewed in the mind. Romans 12, 2, not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. When my mind gets renewed, God starts to reveal His will on my life and just His general will in all in all. In all. What is that? I have to seek. Jeremiah 29, it says, If you seek me, you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. And when, I, when, we, when we pray, when we call upon him, he will answer us. 
And we need to seek Him with all our heart. What are those things? These thoughts, because the battle's in the mind. The enemy is battling in our mind, and we might not see it. This is why the revelation, I once heard that knowledge is just, is just the information. Knowledge is just the information. But understanding, if you go through the book of Proverbs, Solomon shares a lot about understanding. Understanding is illumination. So knowledge is information. Understanding is illumination. I don't want to be like the Pharisees that honor him with thy lips, but the heart is far from him. I don't want to be like those people that just have lip service, but don't have a living service. I don't want to just read and memorize the scripture. I want to live and be transformed by the scripture. God's word, Hebrews 4.12, living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, powerful than any two-edged sword. It pierces the joints, the marrow, the soul, and the spirit. And here's what's great about God's word. It is a discerner of the intentions of the thoughts and the heart. It discerns our thoughts. It discerns our heart. We need to guard our hearts and our mind. That's why the enemy is after it. That's why the enemy is after it, because if the enemy can plant seeds in your mind of doubt, hurt, unforgiveness, lustful desires, okay? Let, come on, let, let's be honest. When, when the enemy can really plant these things in our thoughts, we can either decide to water that plant, water that seed, or we can have the authority as ambassadors of Jesus Christ through the blood of Jesus to rebuke, resist, and renounce. Jesus, because of what he did at the cross of Calvary in Colossians, it says that we have been given and he's been given all authority, all power over all principalities and powers because of his blood. We have to know our authority as kingdom children. We need to know how to set our minds on the things above. Whatever things are just, noble, true, whatever things are of good report, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure. Philippians 4.8 says, these are the things that we meditate on. These are the things that are praiseworthy. Colossians 3.2, set our mind on the things above. I need, to, I need to set my mind on higher things, on the things above. I need a Hebrews chapter 12, fix my eyes on Jesus, the author, defender, the perfecter, and the finisher of my faith. What does that look like? How are you continuing to renew your thoughts and your mind? Lamentations, his mercies are fresh. His mercies are new every single day. Do you truly have the understanding, the revelation, the knowledge? I think about Peter. Because people, they make assumptions about who Jesus is, but I want the unction of the Holy Spirit. I want the revelation. I want the knowledge. I want the understanding. I want the wisdom from God. The Holy Spirit, who is our revelator, who is our teacher, who gives us wisdom and teaches us, that's who I need. The one that gives me the unction to function in the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be dead. In, I want to be alive in Christ. I want to have the Spirit of God that lives inside of me, that causes me to live. That it is He who is within me that is greater than who is He who is within this world. The, the type of move where it's like, it is no longer I that live. It's Christ that lives inside of me because I'm crucified with Christ, Galatians 2.20. I look at Peter. You know, when Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some say one of the prophets. That's the assumptions of people. And when you assume it is not truth, when you assume, you're just assuming. You, you don't know if that's, if that's relevant. You don't know if that's truth. But Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And what did Jesus tell him? He said, blessed are you, son of Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but the father that is up in heaven. I want heaven's rema. I want that sound of heaven to rema in my heart. I want the sound of heaven to fill me up to the point where when I hear the sound, it's truth. It's praiseworthy. It's a promise from God. It's what I'm going to believe over the lie, the schemes of the devil, the strategies, the tactics. I know how to fight this battle. I know who I am, the calling, the purpose. 
I know what that I'm attached to him and it's greater than what I can ever think, ask or imagine. I, I can receive peace, joy, liberty, which is ultimately freedom on earth as it is in heaven on earth as it is in heaven. And when I think about that, we can live a life that is fully set free. I look at Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus, right? The spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to set those that are bound up and allow liberty to those that are bound up and in captivity. That's what bondages do. Hurt people, hurt people. But heal people, heal people. God wants you to heal. The enemy wants you to hurt. Because if you can live off dysfunction, if you can live off your past, I tell people it's illegal to bring up your past if it's not covered by the blood of Jesus as a kingdom kid. It is illegal to bring up your past if it's not covered by the blood of Jesus. Bringing up your past is like trying to rob your old house. You don't live there anymore. And that's what the enemy does. We probably heard that, right? The devil tries to bring up your past. You bring up his future. Well, the future is looking great for those that are living for the kingdom. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. And it might not look good in my eyes, but God, let me see it through your lens. Let me see it through your perspective. Let me see it through your eyes. The Bible is very clear that we must see it through the lens of God, that our spiritual eyes must be open, that when I see things in the spirit, I do things in the flesh. I do things in the natural that look unnatural, but it produces seed. It produces fruit in the supernatural. If you knew what happened in the natural or the supernatural, you'd pray more. You'd praise God more. You'd believe what he is doing in your life, even though it doesn't look like he's moving in the natural. There's something stirring up in the spiritual. Welcome to being simply uncaged, living a life that is free, living a renewed lifestyle, a renewed mind lifestyle. That's what it's about to be a kingdom kid, to live born again, born above is what the scriptures talk about. I am born again. I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm brand new. I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. So as you launch into victory, yes, there's going to be trials. Yes, storms might come. Yes, tribulations might come. But how you see obstacles, challenges in the supernatural, in the spiritual realm is going to allow you to make better decisions. And remember, your decisions determine your condition. And that's why we're going to create a place, a community of people that are just going to heal. Heal through past hurt, trauma, abuse. What I got to unlearn so that I can learn who Jesus is and I can accept him 100% as the Lord of my life. He's not just the God of my life. He is the Lord of my life. Lord, meaning I have a relationship with him. Welcome to that journey. Welcome to being renewed in the mind, simply uncaged, and see what Jesus is going to do. We're doing a lot of different episodes. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Be renewed in the mind that you may be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In Jesus' mighty name, bye-bye.